Okay, hi everyone and uh, welcome to this masterclass about uh, how to create a first-class portfolio or um, more precisely how to build an online portfolio that stands out in a crowd. Um, so we are here together today uh, using the iDo platform. So just a few words to tell you how it works. Uh, you should have um, a button okay, to switch to the full screen mode. And also there is a chat on the left. Okay, you can switch different between different views also. So if you don't want the chat on the left and just focus on the content, uh, you have some buttons okay at the top. Uh, the chat is moderated and it's the way to ask me questions. Okay, so this session will be a discussion. It will be also very interactive. So don't hesitate, ask questions. Maybe we can uh, we can test uh, the chat together now. So if you want to say hi or just tell me where you live maybe and I will moderate the question. So I have a computer on the left. So that's why I have to turn my head and I see Derek, hello, Smooth Loops, Axela. Okay, Mariobi from London, okay. Poland, ah, Poland. I have my friend uh, Piotr who lives in Poland. Toulouse, Claude Nougaro, okay. Oh my God, so many messages. <laughs> okay, okay. okay, stay quiet, stay quiet. Dublin, I have Italy, Belgium, Dubai, Paris, uh, UK, Switzerland, Amsterdam, Norway. Okay, okay, stay with me, stay with me. So, I'm supposed, uh, so every time I will see um, uh, a question, I will click on it so that it can appear for everyone. But here there are too many questions, like there are already too many messages, so I won't be able to click everywhere. But that's good. Uh, we have people from all around Europe, Middle East, uh, Africa, so that's great. I like it. And uh, I guess you are, uh, like me, all designers. Uh, so let me maybe introduce myself um, and uh, uh, we can start, start this masterclass. Uh, so by the way, this masterclass is part of a series of masterclasses that you will see this month um, about um, how to become a successful designer, okay? how uh, to build your career. Uh, so next week, for instance, we have the chance to have Muscatin, who is a designer in, in uh, Belgium uh, that I really like. I, mean, I am a big fan of his uh, artwork. And um, he's also very good at, um, uh, you know, PR himself, uh, especially on Instagram. So he really, he built a community and I really like it. So we will talk about it next week with him. And within two weeks also, uh, there will be um, a digital painter and you will be able to interact uh, with her. Uh, so yeah, great content uh, this month. Just follow us on Twitter. Uh, you can also... Um, uh, follow all the Adobe European accounts and we have a blog also blogs.adobe.com uh, slash um, creative where you can follow this content um, but we can talk about the links later so myself so my name is Michael Shez today we will talk how to PR yourself so that's why I'm putting here a big picture because usually designers are pretty shy when it comes to um, promoting your work, uh, promoting uh, what we are doing, um, what is our creative process. And I remember when I used to work in creative agencies, it was a very secret environment. It was like working for the NSA. So everything was secret. We couldn't share the name of the customers, couldn't share anything about the projects. But time has changed now, and it's the world of transparency. So we are, you are really invited to share who you are, your personality, what you are doing, um, because if you share your work, you don't share secrets. You just uh, you don't sell your value as a designer. You don't sell uh, your eye, your creative mind, um, but just how you work. And it's a kind of insurance for future customers and also the best way to make connections. Um, so if you want to contact me and if I cannot answer all your questions, you can just reach me on Twitter. My nickname is Mshez and I work for Adobe in the Creative Cloud team. So if you have also any questions about the Creative Cloud, I would be happy to answer it. Um, so today we will uh, speak about uh, a common issue, which is, okay, I need to build a portfolio. I am a designer and um, uh, I see a lot of designers directly working with developers, asking them, okay, can you build a portfolio for me? And um, of course they say yes sometimes and uh, you need to update the portfolio and then it becomes a mess. Uh, your portfolio is never up to date and you 
and you want also to engage with the community. So now there are a lot of platforms on the web dedicated to designers who want to showcase their work and build online and interactive portfolios. Um, during this masterclass, I will focus on Behance, which is one of them, but all the tips that I will share with you about uh, how to gain visibility and how to engage with other creatives can work with other platforms too. Okay, But today we will focus on Behance. Uh, so I will show you how it works if you are not on Behance today, how to be active and uh, how to get your work noticed, giving you some tips and see how you can build this uh, dynamic portfolio. Okay, um, so Behance has been created by uh, Scott Belsky and Matthias Correa. And this is a startup in New York that has been acquired by uh, Adobe. Um, two years ago, I would say, and this is today uh, the biggest social networks for creative professionals. And what is beautiful with um, Behance is that it doesn't it doesn't focus just on one creative field. Um, Dribble, for instance, uh, is a very good very good social network for creatives, but with a huge focus on uh, UX design, for instance, where on Behance you will find all the creative fields from motion design to photography um, to digital painting um, to um, yeah, any kind of art, even architecture, for instance. So all the creatives are on the social networks and now we have more than uh, 5 million members. Uh, so it's by far the biggest one. And you can find some uh, interesting websites such as this one I really like. It's called uh, behance.net slash year in review. And it, these are some facts about Behance and some good stories about what happened in 2014. Uh, so for instance, let's see. So at the end of 2014, it was, yeah, 4.2, but now it's over five. Um, okay. So yeah, so for instance, someone uh, shared some experiments he made on Instagram and got noticed by uh, National Geographic on Behance. Also, there is this uh, beautiful story of uh, for, um, uh, uh, someone who does some compositing in Photoshop, and he's only 18 years old, and he lives in Egypt. You know? So he published everything on Behance, and one day he received a, a message from Pink Floyd, um, uh, the rock band, asking him, oh, we really like especially this picture. Can we use this picture for our new album, for the cover of the new album. So this is how, thanks to internet and Behance in this case, um, a very young and talented designer based in Egypt has been able uh, you know, to directly engage with Pink Floyd, receiving a message. And if you check um, the new Pink Floyd, okay, maybe I can look for it. So it's Pink Floyd album. I don't exactly remember the name. Okay, this is here. The Endless River. So the Endless River, the cover is uh, an artwork actually that you can see on Behance and that has been created by uh, uh, Ahmed uh, Emad El Din. So beautiful achievements, beautiful story. Also, I like the story of Dennis uh, Medry, uh, who uh, inspired by Marvel, started to uh, develop a new character, okay? Uh, based on uh, Spider-Man and uh, actually this designer has been contacted by Marvel and now works for Marvel uh, to uh, create uh, uh, a new story and uh, it's uh, yeah the steampunk lady, lady spider. Uh, so it's a great opportunity because if you uh, compare it with other, um, I mean just even five years ago it was so um, difficult to engage with uh, companies and people overseas. But now, um, I mean, you have to, to think about uh, a bubble. So when I started, I remember 15 years ago working in creative agencies. I was building a reputation in the bubble. So I'm based in Paris. So it was mainly the creative in agencies in Paris knew more or less my name. But now with uh, a good portfolio with internet and being active on social networks, you can build the same reputation worldwide, which is really amazing, and really interesting. So what we want to avoid, and I still uh, find on the web uh, some uh, portfolio with this icon of designers saying, okay, the website, my portfolio is under construction 
or the new ver version is coming very soon. Uh, and then you get uh, this message for one or two years because we all know how this is to uh, work with, uh, I don't know, a developer who would like to build a custom website for you. Um, it can take a lot of time uh, because usually designers, we can hardly invest in building um, um, a first class portfolio um, website. Okay. Otherwise, I mean, all. If you are very lucky, maybe you can do it. If you know uh, HTML, CSS, maybe you can start jumping in it. But then that's the risk. So this is what we want to avoid. So that's why um, I invite you to use um, something such as Behance. Uh, so let me show you how it works first. So Behance um, is free. Okay, this is uh, also a very important aspect. Maybe you don't need my face anymore. Yeah, let me remove my face. Okay, that's better. Um, and so once you are logged in, you will be invited to find all their designers and follow them. Uh, and then it will build this wall, which is the first wall, the activity wall when you log in on Behance. And these are projects that are appreciated or liked, if you prefer, by, the, by uh, creative people that you follow. So it's a great way to discover projects and also talented people who share the same interests and maybe the same taste. Um, what is funny is that we, we have found out that uh, on Behance, uh, usually let's say you are um, a photographer, maybe you won't be inspired by other photographers. So usually you, you don't want to follow exactly the same creative field. Maybe you will be inspired by architects or motion designers for your photography art. Uh, so that's also something you can do on Behance. I, I see, uh, okay, some of you have technical issues. So if you don't see anything, I invite you to refresh, okay, your browser. If you hear a sound loop or a feedback or echo, it's probably because you have two tabs or two windows opened. Um, but yeah, okay, let's continue. Oh, you see, I just received, <laughs> it's funny, uh, Egar Ruina, so maybe you're following the masterclass a notification. So this is my Creative Cloud desktop. Um, um, so if you are a member of the Creative Cloud, this is where you can decide to install, update all the apps. And it's directly linked to my, uh, uh, to my Behance account. So that's why every time I receive an appreciation, a new follower, I will be notified, uh, which is really cool. Good way to engage with the community. Ah, now I will get a lot of new followers. That's nice. Thank you, guys. Uh, so here, we are on Behance. Then there is the Discover tab. Very useful. I use it all the time because I'm now organizing um, events for the creative community, such as the Creative Jams in uh, several cities in the world. So what you can do is say, OK, I'm looking for a project or specific people. Um, I'm looking for someone who deals with illustration most appreciated, so a lot of likes, which feel, which means that should be um, quality work or most viewed or most discussed um, or most recent to see who has been active. Also here, there is the time period. So uh, most appreciated this week, this month, all time. Okay, so let's pick this month. And then you can focus, and I really like it, on a specific region. So let's say France and even focus on a specific city. And here we go. Uh, so the first one is Tom uh, Hogoma, which is one of the most famous illustrators these days. Uh, very talented. And then uh, you can, you first you interact with the thumbnails. And then if you go here, you will discover the project. Okay, this one is really incredible. Just with folded paper, beautiful. Uh, okay, someone I don't know, I don't know. Silva, for instance, who is using um, Adobe Illustrator Draw on his iPad to make uh, beautiful illustrations and portraits. So what you can do is say, okay, this is the famous blue tag. I appreciate this work. And I can choose to follow Silva. So every time he will publish a new project, I will be notified. And I can also add him to a collection. So I say add to collection. And these are lists that you can create and I will say, uh, okay, uh, Illustrator in Paris, save. 
and then you save projects and then we show you what are collections later okay there is also a jobs tab um, because behance is um, um, becoming also a marketplace for designers so if you are uh, looking for someone if you are an agency you want to hire um, a designer uh, you can now post uh, a job on behance and also if you are looking for a job so let's say that i want to see if it's pretty new so i don't know if i will find something but let's say that in france i'm looking for the opportunities and we think for instance they are building a smart watch you know it's a apple watch competitor a beautiful watch um uh, that are uh, connected and uh, they are looking for a UX UI designer for instance so you can click here and what is good uh, what is good is that if you want to apply they can directly access your portfolio you know you don't have to say to send a curriculum or uh, this kind of or, or resume uh, they will directly see your work feel your personality uh, which is great so it's a great bridge between professionals um, to boost your career and then there is your portfolio a simple page uh, you can define the color background, j just a few parameters, but not that much. It's just really to focus on your content and your projects. And then, okay, you can click here, discover the project, so some illustrations. And as you can see, it starts with an introduction where you speak a little bit about the project, the tool you used. Um, you can be also several uh, owners of the project. You can add text, images and then at the end uh, you can directly engage with the, com uh, the community uh, answering comments okay so these are the projects the collections also i was talking about um, it's a great way to save projects that you really like and uh, put them in categories but what is cool is that uh, some people can follow so for instance on the color topic i have seven followers and every time i see something colorful I add it to this collection or the lettering masters uh, here it's a new page with uh, some projects and you can decide to follow um, my selection so it's very nice it's like a playlist on Spotify in a way um, so I will just show you some stuff and I will take some questions because some questions are coming uh, appreciated just the work I've appreciated and then the work in progress is something very specific to Behance so before talking about it because it's really something you need to understand and uh, be active in it uh, to make a difference I will start first answering some questions so someone is asking about tuk, tuk, tuk. okay oh, okay so first so someone say oh sorry I missed the the first 10 minutes uh, so this masterclass is recorded and you will you can access the replay on this website on adobe.ido.com in two hours i guess i mean this afternoon uh, it will also be published on youtube um, maybe at the end of the week on the adobe creative cloud channel on youtube okay okay someone is asking creative jams yes so this, these are the uh, events that I am organizing uh, okay is Behance a good platform for showcasing video works as well uh, yes uh, see. okay so my portfolio is a kind of fake one I mean this is this is personal project but I try to put all the kinds of, of media uh, so for instance here you can embed as you can see videos from vimeo or youtube and uh, directly uh, push the videos and then explain the process okay so yeah video of course it works um there are especially i would say motion designers on behance not so many video makers but there are some is it going to be more than a uh, commercial for behance okay i don't think i get the question let me think of it uh, someone is asking i am a fashion photographer yes uh would you recommend having both on my fields or separate portfolios uh, <laughs> good question i think what is more important is your personality so my advice is to put both um so behance for motion graphics yes it's clearly one of the best options um 
Will you be willing to review portfolios maybe at the end? And what is better? Behance of personal website, I will talk about it. And three, th three things you should avoid, I will talk about it too. Okay, so just to end with the demonstration of Behance, I want to introduce you to the concept of work in progress, which is really something very specific. So here, for instance, I've been working on a, a conference in Paris and uh, we needed a logo. So I started saying to my friends, okay, I'm working on the logo. So this is just something uh, quickly drawn, you know, with uh, just a pen. Okay. And then um, using Adobe Shape, I don't know if you are aware of this app. Uh, let me show you what it is. So Adobe Shape CC is a mobile application where you can take a picture of a drawing okay, in black and white, and then it will become a vector art, like a vector shape that you can, thanks to the Creative Cloud, directly access from Illustrator or Photoshop on your desktop. So it's very, very cool. You should try it, Adobe Shape. It's free. Um, and then second step, I am Illustrator and I have a path, so it was the final path, okay, optimizing all the points. Then I played with the width tool in Illustrator. So you see, I share all my steps, okay, but not so that it becomes a tutorial. It's also become because I get some feedbacks and also it's an opportunity uh, to share my creative process, which is also part of your personality, which is very important, not to only show the final result, but also how you work, okay. Uh, okay, let me see if I have another example, maybe an old one. Okay, so I was working on a web design. So again, just sh sh uh, you, know, t you take a picture and you share it as a work in progress. I'm working on this page. This is just a wireframe for the structure. Uh, this is my grid in Photoshop. Uh, this is using Adobe Muse, uh, okay, and then the final results uh, in HTML. And again, you, you get all the feedback. Uh, this is, okay, this, this one is a stupid one, but I guess you will understand. Again, starting in Photoshop and sharing all the process step-by-step step to the final composition. So how can you um, share work in progress? It can be from anywhere, all the Adobe, so, of course, you can say, I want to create here at work, a work in progress, and then you upload your own pictures, but also directly from the application. This is something you can do. Even mobile applications. So here, let me switch to full screen. So this is my iPad. Okay. I will open uh, an Adobe application, for instance, Adobe Sketch, create a new project. Uh, so Adobe Photoshop Sketch, okay, it's just an application that you can use uh, to uh, sketch something, draw something. So we'll just call it master class. Okay. And open the project and uh, just uh, code something. Uh, so sketch something. So I will select a brush. Okay, this one looks good. And quickly, okay, draw something. So let's, let's say I, I start uh, working on something. And at any time, you can say, I want to get feedback. So what it will do is that from the Adobe Mobile Apps, um, create a new work in progress and okay you can add some categories return and say publish and it will push it on Behance and if someone uh, is uh, uh, commenting my work in progress I will be notified directly within the app and I will be able uh, to, okay, to, to engage with um, the people who are following me on Behance so your work in the, is live. And actually, if you visit Behance now, you should be able to see it on my profile in the work in progress tab. Oh, actually, this is opening everything. Okay. So that's good. So now it's opening the website. 
Okay, so this is a first work in progress. And then if I go back to the app, so let's say, okay, I, I continue working on it. And then I want to finish my work in Photoshop. So uh, today, thanks to Creative Cloud, all the mobile apps are connected to your desktop apps. So what I can say is send to Photoshop. So it will create a PSD file. And okay, oh, you see, I get some feedback here. I have a new icon. And this is Christoph who said, okay, this is styled, still a. Okay. Thank you, Christoph, for the feedback. I don't think it's a very useful feedback, but it's very nice. Thank you. And now on my desktop, it has magically opened Photoshop. Okay, so this is thanks to Creative Cloud. You start on mobile device and you say send to Photoshop, send to Illustrator, and boom, it will just pop up. And now I can, okay, continue working on the background, maybe add some texture. There you go, maybe invert this. And even from Illustrator, from Photoshop, etc. At any time, you can say um, blah, 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 share on Behance. And it will generate a thumbnail, okay, or preview. And you can say either it's a new work in progress or it's the revision of Masterclass. Okay, it's a new iteration. And I click on continue. So this is really a great way, and you can also treat it. Uh, so this is really a great way as you work to share what you are doing. So it really has to be, to to become something that is part of your strategy when you have a portfolio to share how you work. Okay. Then when you decide to publish a project on your portfolio, don't just publish the final result. So to create a project, you say add work. I want to add a project, and then as you as you may already be aware of. You just upload pictures. Okay, so this is not from me. This is from uh, the CD agency. It's from the Creative Jam we just did in New York. And I can add some text. Okay, Creative Jam in New York. And then here I want to add a new picture. I can also add a picture that is coming directly from uh, my uh, Creative Cloud account. Okay, so what is cool is that, okay, let's say take this, etc., etc., And then you add uh, tags. So if you click on continue, you define the thumbnails. I will give you some tips, by the way, about what you should do with thumbnails. A title, okay, this is just a test. And you add some tags, okay? So creative fields, uh, this is illustration, uh, project tags, uh, lettering, you can add several owners, project description, the tool you use, etc., etc., And then you click on publish and it's live. Okay. So it's very easy to just build a new project. It will take five minutes. Okay, no code, nothing. Uh, it's very straightforward. But then I really invite you not to share only the final result, but to share the story from A to Z. So. Let me uh, show you how I did this. So this is the story of uh, the Creative Cloud Espresso Cup, a project I've been working on. Um, so first, I show the final result with a video. So as you can see, it's a white ceramic espresso cut that looks like the uh, Creative Cloud logo. There is a description here. This is a project I've done with my friend Stefan Barriel. So that's why there are multiple owners because Stefan is also a 3D expert and I'm really bad at 3D. And then I shared the story. So it started with a sketch on my iPad, actually. Then 3D modeling in Photoshop CC. And then 3D print. So I start, we started uh, printing a plastic sample just to fill uh, the product. And we used uh, Shapeways or Sculteo, a French company, to directly send the model from Photoshop and we received uh, the white ceramic uh, 3D cup. And you get the whole story and we got really nice comments and you can engage with the community, say thank you, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so it's always better to share the process, okay? Um, rather than just uh, 
you know, just sharing the final results. Add your personality. So this is how Behance works. I will just take f some questions here. Um, because I see that there are a lot of questions today. Okay. So someone is asking about, I guess, work in progress. Don't you think that it's not professional? I think that these days, of course, if you are working on a sensitive and confidential project, don't share it, of course. But these days, uh, I think that the more transparent you are, uh, uh, the better it is. So I will invite you uh, to share your creative process. Because again, if you know how to do lettering, uh, sharing your creative process won't change anything. I mean, it's a lot of practice. So this is something that really um, reflects yourself. Okay. So that's why, yeah. Okay. So you tell an agency, never share your work. So this is something really you need to re reconsider these days. Uh, so in the video industry, Behance is not widely used but more and more because I see more and more video makers using Behance to share and embed Vimeo videos. Someone is asking, what is the app you just used to sketch? So it's Adobe Sketch on iOS, on the iPad. Okay, uh, we're working on Android versions of our mobile apps. It's coming very soon. How long has Behance been around for? I would say five years max. It's a young, uh, young platform, but uh, Already, it's the leading today. It's the leading platform for creative people. Uh, how to present photography? Again, uh, show some pictures, but share the stories behind your pictures. Uh, it's very important. Uh, not to, yeah, I think it's the best way. So, good question from Darko. Hey, Michael, do you think it's possible to find another artist on Behance to work with on a project together? So, actually, it happened to me. Um, and this is something that, yes, can uh, really happen without any issue. Um, you will directly be contacted okay, by someone and then you will start working on a collaborative project. So I cannot share it, but I'm working with someone who is in San Francisco now on a typography project. It should be very fun. So yes, yes, it happens all the time. Okay, uh, and just some questions about the 3D modeling we use for uh, the Creative Cloud Cup. It was a mix of Photoshop CC and Cinema 4D. You share everything, but how do you protect your, your new design and copyright? Uh, I mean, the, the, the copyright stuff, if someone wants to copy your work, I mean, he can. It's just that it's, uh, you know, it's like asking a musician, please don't play your music because if someone records your music, wh what about the copyright? Okay, so it's true that there is a risk as a designer to expose your work, uh, but I feel that there is much benefits than risk in this case. Um, but of course, you will see even on Behance a lot of people trying to copy your work. Uh, I've just seen that with uh, so there is a very very talented designer, Maria Grunland. She's based in Denmark, and she. She did the uh, Living Colors project, Beautiful Shapes in Illustrator. And, um, and we saw together someone um, in another country. It was almost copy paste. Um, but then you just send a note, you know, on behind to say, please come on. Uh, this is exactly what I'm doing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, don't worry about it. Okay, and some of you, you have uh, Eco, apparently. Um, make sure you don't have two tabs open or just refresh the, the window. So as you saw on um, Behance, all the designers have more or less the same user experience. And as a designer, I'm pretty sure that you want to have a unique website with a unique experience. So on one side, you will tell me, yes, I want a portfolio, but um, and I want to control the design to make it very personal and make a difference with all the other designers. Um, but then it will be hard to maintain. And every time you will add a project on Behance, you will have to add it also on your website. So we we'll have to maintain two websites with two different technologies, two different sizes, etc., etc. So the trick is 
uh, actually, um, there is an offering called ProSite. If you are a member of the Creative Cloud, it's part of your membership, so you can activate it today. It's just that it's not very famous, uh, at least in Europe. It's more used um, in uh, the US, I would say. So ProSite is a professional personal website where the content is linked to your Behance um, portfolio, to your Behance profile, which means that every time you will add a project on Behance, it will automatically be added to your personal website. So if you <clears throat> check this website by Memoma, so you see it's memoma.prosite.com, uh, memoma but you can also choose to add your custom URL. Okay, so you can uh, say uh, memoma.com, for instance, and link it to your prosite. So you see it's super green. Then I want to know more about this project. I will jump here. It's a video. There is an about page. There we go. There is a contact page. News, work, etc. So this one is new. So these are all videos, by the way. You were asking about videos. But this is uh, actually linked to a Behance page. So here there is follow on Behance at the bottom. And if, if you look at here, these are all the projects that are on the website. And if you edit the project, let's say you add a picture on Behance, then it will be automatically added on your website. You can also choose to say, okay, this project, I don't want it on my website. I just want on, on Behance. You can change the order that you want on a website. A lot of flexibility. Another example I really like is uh, this one, Bande Originale. Uh, where yeah, you, you can visit it, you will see also uh, a lot of video projects with uh, animated thumbnails. So how does it work? Once you are on Behance, you can say here, my portfolio or my pro site and edit your pro site. Then it will launch a UI and without coding again, just defining settings, you can create your own project. It's based on uh, several uh, templates. So you also have a lot of templates here that you can preview and then that you can customize. Geometric, three columns. Uh, here you have the projects tab. Okay, projects tab where you can define the projects you want to showcase and in which order. You have design and say that the website logo, I want to change it. Or, okay, the header image, uh, website description, you can enter here, background style. So if you click, it will just open something and, uh, okay, remove the tile and use something, I don't know, yellow so that you can see it. So you can just, yeah, change all the pieces of design add this kind of effects using CSS when you mouse over an image, add small animations, and you say update the live site and boom, it's live. And again, you can link it to your own domain name. So if you want to to buy uh, johndo.com and link it to your pro site, it's very easy. If you want to know more how to customize it on my blog, so it's uh, creativedroplets.com, there is a tutorial called Pimp My Pro Site Portfolio, where I share design um, tips uh, to use TypeKit fonts, so very specific fonts, professional on your uh, pro site, how to animate the thumbnail, adding some CSS, adding some custom CSS directly uh, within the, the site. So yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of tips that you can find. So it's a good way if you want to have a dedicated website. Okay, so... Doo -doo -doo. Just, I will take two questions. Uh, so do you think it's okay to show different disciplines on one behind space? So I will talk about it. Uh, 
how to how to avoid do you avoid getting your design copied you cannot avoid that okay it's part of the game part of the risk but as i said there are more benefits than risk with sharing what you are doing because no one will be able to copy your talent is my cc account linked to behance automatically i think there is a match uh, that we have to do but now on behance you can directly sign in with your adobe id so yes it will be directly linked if i want to include blog will it work on behance so there is also um, a behance api so if you have already a blog you can um okay let me find it uh, behance api yeah so there is a developer documentation you can also embed on your website the projects with all the thumbnails, everything, uh, and it's very easy. These are like widgets, like embedding a Twitter um, timeline. Super easy. How to publish InDesign as PDF? No, uh, so on the web, you, you have to export uh, images. Okay, so some best practices now. As you have seen with the Creative Cloud Espresso Cup, storytelling is very important. So don't just share the results share the origin of the project what was the brief the source of your inspiration the creative process the problem you solved and the recognition the feed feedback you got at the end maybe the awards that you got at the end of your project um, i think that you will have much more feedback uh, much more recognition if you share the, the entire creative process uh, it's really key and I uh, you will see next week with uh, Muscaton who is a, a very talented uh, graphic designer based in Belgium he shares everything from A to Z and he's one today considered as one of the most famous illustrator he works for uh, Coca-Cola he works for uh, uh, Nike I think uh, he travels all around the world he shares just everything like everything thumbnail also so it's part of the experience because the thumbnail as you have seen on Behance is the first uh, way to experience your work so um, you really need to not unveil anything but it's a little bit like um, the the teaser of a movie or the trailer of a movie okay do you want to see more just show detail that say oh it looks weird what it is with a good title okay this is the first way to sell your project you want people to click on this thumbnail and i really like this project milk loves you also you have to find the balance between personal work and professional work okay so of course it depends also on the maturity of your portfolio um, but i've seen uh, some designers recently just thanks to the way they communicate and thanks to their portfolio that embraced they embraced a new career okay uh, i saw some designers who are just doing web design they got a little bit bored they wanted to try lettering so they started publishing on behance personal work more and more but very good work and now they are 100% uh, dedicating to lettering customers start uh, contacting him just to to do some lettering or work um, so yes that that works um, and also there are some projects just to create the buzz on Behance it exists so the tone is very important if you check the profile of uh, so there is a very talented Photoshop guru and art director in Paris called Alexis Persani so he will share of course professional work on his portfolio such as let me find something such as this uh, which was for a, a magazine in Denmark okay so he will show everything and in the context of the online magazine but also he will publish personal work so he did something crazy recently called 100 creative numbers so he spent um so just it's a personal project and for each number he tried to play with the new rendition in cinema 4d 
and there are 100 pictures like this okay i think it takes maybe 10 minutes to scroll down <laughs> and to say i appreciate the project um but now uh, so he really defined his style on behance working in cinema 4d and as you can see he has a uh, now a uh, customer work so this one is also for the online magazine so with uh, playtime uh, that that is directly inspired by his personal work okay so also there is an opportunity finding the right balance between what is personal and professional to embrace a new career new directions uh, so it's very important also uh, today you shouldn't see a portfolio um, to as just a way to showcase your work because it's also uh, a way to showcase your personality and yourself so that's why you have to stay very active okay it's very very important and oh yeah i wanted to show this let me go here um so you need to appreciate the work that you really like okay don't become a spammer and uh, appreciate all the work you find just to get noticed it won't be appreciated and it won't work so I saw uh, this um, last year, for instance, someone saying, great work, like a lot, please check mine, I hope you like it. Um, and this is the kind of comment that you, you will find on several projects, always the same guy. And uh, it, it's, he behaves a little bit like a bot, so it doesn't work, okay. So be genuine, of course, don't, don't be a troll, okay. We are, uh, especially in the creative community, very sensitive and, um, the quality of feedback is very important. Also, the, the, your value is not what you produce, it's also uh, how good you can uh, comment the work of your peers. Okay, and it will uh, encourage other designers to interact with you, to maybe work with you, collaborate with you on some creative projects, and maybe share with you some work at some point. I don't know. So the first thing you need to do on Behance is of course, follow your favorite artist, but also, uh, your peers um, in your region so not only the the work stars of design you can build collections plan your work in progress and keep in touch so um, it's really discipline uh, tr try to be as friendly as possible and contact all your peers and on your portfolio so I would say every three months maybe just ask yourself uh, what should I add and also what should I remove because you really want to publish your best projects you don't want to publish everything and this is something I, I see especially with uh, young designers they tend to put everything even work that is so so and that they um, maybe produced uh, during um, at school you know embracing a lot of creative fields so the trick here is really to publish what you want to be um, known for so here in, in I, when i look at that okay i say okay uh, there is good uh, graphic design here uh, working on minimalist songs okay some posters that looks good but also i have some landscape pictures so i don't know so maybe he really wants to do both in this case it makes sense be contacted as a photographer and a graphic designer but if you if in the next month you really want to focus on graphic design then remove the pictures i mean i'm sure you get my point so you have to curate your own portfolio like every three months okay and remove what doesn't make sense um and again you are your best pr which means that you don't need an agent or something if you are very active on social networks and not only Behance, also on Instagram, Twitter, um, but being active on Instagram means that you have to share visual content every day on Twitter, more maybe share articles or thoughts about design every day. So it really depends on you. Stay active and alive. Okay. We don't want to see a website with under construction, this kind of stuff. Uh, we want you we want to feel that you will answer in the 24 next 24 hours. Uh, follow your peers, engage, and also get physical, which means that if you have design events in your region, go to events, okay? Don't bet everything on an online portfolio. So that's why 
Behance actually has created uh, a network of physical events, which are called not the Behance. Sorry, it's a weird mistake. Maybe it's auto corrected. The Behance portfolio reviews. It happens twice a year, and there are more than 200, almost 300 groups in the world where you just meet other Behance members. You bring a portfolio and you get feedback. So super friendly, very casual. So if you visit the, the website of Behance Portfolio Reviews, you can say, okay, I live in Amsterdam and it will show you uh, when when is the next um, portfolio review in your region. And now I will start answering some questions. Okay, you have questions about the JPEG. Okay, it's possible to post too much work. How much is good amount? So it's not about um, how how much or how much work you should post. It's really about the quality and what you want to get noticed for. Um, so yeah, you you really um, have to practice your empathy here and uh, be in the skin of a customer or a visitor or maybe another designer. Um, just discovering a portfolio, let's say he only has 15 seconds. So of course, the top three projects are by far the most important. Um, so yes, so it, and it doesn't have to be your most recent work. Okay, if you are very proud of something that has been created two years ago, uh, put it first in your portfolio. Okay. Okay. Do you have any advice for a networking strategy within the Behance community? Uh, so yeah, the best advice is really to engage with your peers through the activity tab, okay? Especially when uh, they are work in progress. So here, for instance, Vincent, who lives in San Francisco, is working on some typography backgrounds. Uh, he published, I think it was this one, and I suggested him, oh, there is a very nice N% percent that you should try, which is Garamond Premiere Pro. And three days after, he created a wallpaper using uh, what I suggested and say, okay, thank you, Michael. I suggested this is a, a new wallpaper. So this is a kind of friendly conversation you want to have on Behance um, and really be very engaged in the work in progress because this is not final work. This is just a way to get noticed and just to you know drive the conversation with um, with the guys. So, yeah. Uh, so why Instagram if Behance? Uh, so first, because you you want you will reach different audience. Instagram is maybe less professional than Behance, but it's also it's good also to have you know uh, some fans in the community, and you will also get professionals. Uh, and Instagram is just a picture and some text, so it's not also the same way to to share what you are doing. But and it's mainly on mobile device. Although Behance, there are more and more visitors who are also using directly the Behance mobile app. So there is a mobile app for Behance where you can update your portfolio, follow your followers. So it's also a, a great way to stay in touch. Okay. You, okay, so the, to the Behance portfolio review, do you bring a printed portfolio? Uh, if you want, if it makes sense, especially if you are a print designer. Otherwise, you just you can bring your iPhone, your iPad, or your uh, laptop. You know? Or usually they have computers. Uh, so someone is asking about the name of the um, designer. So his name is Muscaton. So now it's in the chat, and uh, he will do the masterclass next week and share his creative process, how he share on social networks, how he, he plays with the illustrator. It's very impressive. Okay, so someone at the university is told that he use, uh, should use InDesign to create more print, printed portfolio, I guess. Um, yeah, so that's a network. Also, it depends on the country, but Behance is worldwide. And at some points, um, I, I see that more and more designers, the fact of living, you know, in Egypt, in Paris, doesn't make any difference. You can be contacted by Pink Floyd, by Coca-Cola uh, to make a mission. So Behance is worldwide. So there is really a great opportunity for a career. 
Can you post private projects? Um, not really. You can post draft projects and share it with some people. But it's supposed to be public at some point, so it's a hack. Okay, you can hack Behance to to make it happen, but that's not the really what you want. Pinterest or Instagram, which one is the most creative for you? Um, good question. Um, most creative. It really depends on the audience. And Pinterest, I'm not sure about the the audience, uh, especially for portfolios as it's more for mood boards but uh, I mean why not I mean you should try and maybe try both and after six months you see where you have the biggest level of engagement that's what I would do if you don't use social networks and only be hands is it used uh, negatively not at all uh, I know a lot of designers who don't really like Facebook and Twitter um, because they, they don't have anything to say except their art, so they just use Behance. And that's fine. Uh, you just need to share your email. I mean, just a way to be contacted. And that's it. Yeah. Is there any kind of quality filters? Uh, or anything acceptable? Quality filters on Behance, I guess, for the thumbnails, I guess. Uh, if it's quality filters. Oh, OK. Sorry, I guess it's when you search for something. So the quality filters is by appreciation, so it's meritocracy. So you say, I want to browse the most appreciated project. That's quality. Featured, it means that it has been created by Behance. Like there is a team at Behance in New York that every week will curate the content to elect like the top 10, okay? Uh, for instance, per week or top 15, I don't remember. So this is what you see when you click on Discover. This project have been selected by the Behance team. Then if you say most appreciated, maybe this week, this project uh, have been appreciated by a lot of designers this week. Okay, this is how it works with uh, filters. And some words about, okay, asking about how to promote your Behance profile. Uh, the best way to use is to use Behance, okay? Uh, the more you are active on this profile, the more visible you will be. The more you will get followers and quality work, the more you will be discovered by other designers because you will appear, your work will appear in the activity tab. So let me show you an example. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, so for instance, I follow Lorena, Maite in France, and Carolis. They all like this project by Phyllis that I don't know. Okay, so it's a good way you know, to discover someone, so Felix, who is based in Germany, and discover its work. Oh, that's funny. It looks like an old printer. You know. A little bit geeky, but that's funny. And then I can decide to follow him. So the more you will be active on Behance, the more you will extend your network. So the replay will be available um, on this website, okay, on adobe.ido.com this afternoon, and also will be posted on the Adobe Creative Cloud YouTube channel. Okay, so here, Adobe Creative Cloud will produce a video. Can I link multiple Behance profiles to a single CC license? Uh, good question. I don't think so because it's linked to an Adobe ID. So I don't think so. so okay, Thomas, you're doing both illustration and branding. Uh, and branding works get more views than my illustrations. Okay. And you want to get more views on the illustration side. Uh, I think the way you can uh, increase your number of views for illustrations uh, will be to follow illustrators. Uh, so follow more and more illustrators on the Behance, extend your network on Behance, including more illustrators, and 
within uh, I don't know four or five weeks it should get better <laughs> more balanced okay guys so it's two o'clock so I guess we will have to stop if you have any question you can contact me afterwards okay at any time on Behance okay of course uh, look for me Michael Shaz but also on Twitter I'm quite active on Twitter so my nickname is M Shaz um, and uh, that's it so again the replay will be available on adobe.ido.com I really invite you to um, be active on Behance if you want to share your portfolio get some tips um, some advice or just collaborate on some project just contact me on Behance and uh, I will be happy to exchange with you so bye guys it has been uh, a pleasure and I hope to um, see you soon on Behance